All right. Hey, we are invading Miss Fenton's room right now. My third hour is testing, and I thought I would go ahead and uh, do a character interview of Salva. Uh, I really don't have a Salva accent, so I apologize. I always sound like I'm Jamaican, and he's not from Jamaica. He's from Sudan. So Salva interview, first uh, question for Salva. Says Salva, when you heard gunshots, what went through your head? Oh dear, uh, when I heard those gunshots, I knew the Civil War was out there, and I just wanted to get out. I, I, I wanted to see my family, and I wanted to catch them. I ran to the bush because my teacher told me to go to the bush, but my dear, I, the whole time I was thinking about get to your family, I want to see them, and when I got to the bush, I wanted to see them, and I, I didn't. Uh, it was extremely hard to be on my own, but I knew I was surviving, and that was the biggest thing at that point, it was just to survive and get out of the, the gunshots. Number two, um, meeting Mariel, was it hard to lose your best friend? Uh, without a doubt. I love that guy. He was my age. He, he was my companion. I could relate to him. He lost his family. I lost mine. He was everything to me. And I wake up one, one morning and Uncle Jawir comes in and says to me that he's, he's, he's gone. And uh, Uncle Jawir is normally a positive person and I didn't know what to say. And uh, uh, Talk about ripping, ripping the heart right out of me. Uh, I didn't know what to do, but I had to move on. Uh, speaking of Uncle Jawir, that's my third one. Why do people respect him? Uh, I think they respect Uncle Jawir because he was positive. He had a gun, and if you have a gun in Sudan, you are respected. Uh, he was a war veteran, and I think that people definitely knew. He knew things that they didn't know, and... Uh, definitely was a man of importance for them. Um, question number four, how did Uncle Jawir's advice influence you? I will never forget him taking me through that Akobo Desert and uh, I was ready to give up, I was ready to quit, but he kept telling me, hey Salva, look beyond there, see that group of bushes over there? You get to that group of bushes, take life one step at a time. I found myself giving that same advice to the people down the road uh, after, uh, sadly enough, my, my uncle died. Number five, how did you get through the Gilo River? Uh, absolute sheer grace of God. I, I, I don't know how I did. You know, swimming across the river with crocodiles, seeing people die right before me, gunshots spraying down from above. I do not know how I survived. I shouldn't have. I should have died right there. There were a thousand boys they died in the river as they were crossing the Gilo, and I, I made it. I don't know how. It was sheer willpower. It was a miracle. Um, when I made it to the other side, uh, I did not know what to think of myself. Number six, what did it mean to come to America? Oh, my dear, everything. You're sitting there in a refugee camp. Are you kidding me? And uh, not knowing where your next meal is going to come from, going to America, finding a new family, Talk about opportunity. I was so blessed to be able to be on the list to go to America. Number seven, how does it feel to give back to Sudan? I made it my lifelong goal, I'm still doing it today, to give back to the country I was raised in. I love Sudan very much, but I know they're very war-torn, uh, and I know that they need water, and I love just helping out my, my home country. I wanna give them water, I'm gonna do this till the day I die, and uh, give back to the country that raised me because they deserve better than the life that they're living right now. All right, this is Salva signing off saying thank you for listening to me on the video.